back to another video and today we've got another sketch with me video just thought i'd have a little bit of a catch up with you guys so yeah i asked you guys to send in some questions and topics for me to discuss in today's video i also have a cup of tea um grab one as well if you wanna if you'd like to join me and yeah just gonna have a cozy sketch with me time Okay, so let's start off with the first question, shall we? Uh, the first question comes to us from blue blue blueberry underscore pie. Uh, what does a job slash internship as an animator entail? Who commissions the work for it? Um, this is very topical, of course, because I'm currently in the middle of an animation internship slash job. Uh, it's uh, it depends where you're interning slash working if you're working for a, a studio You don't really have to worry about like commissions and pitches and stuff if you're just you know interning as um, an animator uh, normally the company uh, deals with or the studio deals with um, Getting clients and work and jobs and you just kind of you know work on what you're what you're, what you're told what you're given but then again, I, I mainly, I'm mainly just talking from experience uh, because, you know, I've been working at this, uh, this one studio. Again, it also depends where in the world you're, you're doing this because different countries have different standards for interns and stuff like that. So normally you'll just do what you're told, I guess, and, uh, and try to build up uh, skills and a portfolio and, and, and just working in a studio in a team. What's your favorite environment to draw in? At your desk, coffee shops, out in nature, etc. Uh, this comes fr from Karen Doodle. Thanks, Karen. Um, I'd say that my favorite environment to sketch in is honestly coffee shops, and but obviously right now that's a bit hard. <laughs> is very sad but um i found a new place where i love to sketch and it's um up on the roof of my condo building it's very quiet and peaceful up there so i feel like that's where my brain gets to relax the most and like be creative i love sketching in bed that's again i love sketching in places where i feel calm and relaxed because when i'm stressed when i'm anxious it's very hard for my brain to shut off from the anxiety and focus on the creativity. I don't really love sketching at my desk unless it's for a video or for work because I associate my desk with work. So it kind of removes the whole, you know, passion creativity for it sometimes. Oh, that's really nice. Sylvia, Sylvia, Sylvia dot Bebik asked, are you doing okay? Thank you so much for asking. Um, I hope you're doing okay. I'm actually uh, doing a bit better. If this is like one of the first videos you're watching of me, I suffer a lot from uh, mental health um, problems. And recently I had a really bad relapse, um, which, uh, you know, I, I, I had to kind of stop doing some work for a bit just to, you know, heal and whatever. But I'm actually doing much better now. I actually went home for a few days to um, in Portugal to recharge and uh, I had some doctor's appointments to you know just help me um, figure this out a little bit better and that made me feel a lot better you know knowing that there's always something else you can do that you know there's always a cure for whatever you're there's always a solution I'm feeling a lot better I feel recharged I feel ready to work again definitely not like perfect obviously. I don't think anyone's feeling at the top of their game this year. Let's be very real. So uh, under the circumstances of 2020, I am feeling okay. <laughs> Hope you're doing okay too. Laura Fox asked, any tips on choosing color schemes? I do actually. Um, I have this book. Actually, I'm going to go fetch it for you guys. Uh, this book here is like my holy grail for colors and uh, feeling inspired by color combinations. It's called Palette Perfect by Lauren Wager. Um, and it's just honestly amazing. It's filled with color palettes. It's um, organized under themes. So you, like at the top over here, you have what, what theme these classify as. And, and it shows you examples of how they're used in design and photography. And it also gives you like a, a little crash course on color theory and the history of uh, color and 
little history lesson, a bit of a science lesson on uh, the spectrum of light and Isaac Newton, uh, neutral colors, the color wheel and, you know, temperatures. I really, really, really recommend it. I use this book like religiously. <laughs> and another thing I'd recommend is also probably um, art books. So like if there's an animation film that you really enjoy, I there, there's probably a art of a uh, book about that film that you should probably get because they always um, have sections on color palettes and color stories that were um, experimented and used for the film. What have been your best experiences in college? Uh, by college, I assume you mean university here in the UK. Um, honestly, my university experience was lovely. I just graduated this year for anyone who doesn't know. And yeah, I think one of the best experiences was just making new friends. And I know that's very vague and uh, obvious, but honestly, the friends I made at university were amazing and I love them all very, very much. And being able to make friends uh, that like all have the same interests as you and we all got to you know go on really amazing trips uh, abroad to, for animation festivals and stuff uh, stuff like that and just you know traveling with friends and watching stuff that all of you love and admire it's just a very rich experience uh, okay I feel like I've warmed up a little just drew like this uh, this little, little lady also, I get this question a lot. You guys, my Pinterest is always linked uh, in my YouTube videos, like in the description box. If you guys are ever interested in seeing my boards and like reference pictures and stuff that I use, it's always down there. Okay, next question. Are you happy with your job and new apartment? Yes, thank you so much for asking, Lara Josephine underscore. Yeah, I feel so happy. I'm so, so blessed that I got to like move straight from university into uh, another, you know, another city and move back home and got, you know, an internship and a job and it's just feeling super grateful always that that that's my reality and I'm obviously so so happy with it. People get a bit confused when I share about my mental health struggles on social media. Um having mental illness is not like exactly always a uh, a direct uh, what's the word link to whether or not you're unhappy somewhere obviously there might sometimes be a link but normally it's uh, just an accumulation of things that kind of cause you to have uh, relapses so yeah I may be depressed but I am very happy where I am and uh, as strange as that may seem to some people how did you build your following and what are some tips you can give to someone trying? I get this question on the daily and I honestly never really know how to answer it because I didn't do anything with the intention of getting a big following. That was never something that I like did with, with, like, with intention. I just kind of started posting my drawings on, on Instagram and it just like, it just started gaining a following. I was very lucky that it just, uh, like people just stumbled upon, upon my stuff and, and enjoyed them. I'd say tips for people who are trying uh, to grow their following on Instagram. It's definitely to probably create a reliable schedule. People who follow you, uh, they'll probably want to know like, you know, if you're gonna post regularly and how often they can see your work and how often they can expect uh, to see you on their feed, etc. I know the algorithm right now is really, really uh, making some people struggle. It's kind of awful to see uh, people that I love and look up to getting like no interaction and, and zero engagement in their, in their artworks. And it's very sad to see, so yeah if you want to support some people don't forget to like hit the uh, the save button on instagram and stuff i feel like i heard that that's like really really helpful and in terms of tips yeah just try to be as uh, as consistent as you can it doesn't mean posting every day it just means if you're gonna post once a month keep that consistent if you're gonna post once every two weeks keep that consistent it creates a sort of a schedule yeah, keep, uh, try and stay active on there, I guess. 
and post stuff that you like, that you would want to see on your feed, I guess, because that will attract the kind of people that you want on your page. Uh, do you like K-pop? Because every time I give a follow to some group pages, you already are a follower. I done been seeing you guys. Yes, I, I am a, I'm a K-pop fan. Um, I've mentioned this a lot in, in some of my videos, but I do stand some groups. And I find it so funny when some of you guys like follow even like fan accounts and just like some group accounts and then you're like, oh, you're already following this, lol. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I don't follow many, many groups, uh, to be honest. I have like my little like set of like five groups that I like and um, I tend to just stick to them. Uh, and please, everyone, stop asking me if I stand BTS, because I'm not a BTS fan. Not like, it's not that I dislike them, I've just never gone into it. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do during spooky season? Ooh, um, I normally, normally, being non-2020, love going to Halloween parties. They're always the most fun. Um, it's just like planning costumes and getting there and seeing everyone else's costumes is like the most thrilling thing. I love it so much. Um, other than that, I don't really do much spooky stuff because I don't, I don't like horror films. Uh, I, I just, I already have a lot of anxiety. Okay. I don't need to subject myself to some more, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't vibe with uh, Halloween movies, not Halloween movies, but horror movies. I like Halloween movies. Those are like the funny ones and like the, the the horror movies that you can laugh at. Those are nice. This year, of course, there's not going to be any Halloween parties to go to. So I guess I'm just going to have to stay content with seeing people's costumes from their own homes online and, and try and, you know, have as much fun as I can indoors for this spooky season. Lara Loria Illustrations asked me, how do you adult? I'm turning 20 in December. So helpful, uh, so helpful adult tips would be much appreciated. Lara, let me tell you something. No one really knows how to adult, okay? It's honestly, it's fake. It's fake news. People who you think know how to adult, they're probably just as confused as you are and just kind of pretending like they have their shit together. Because let's be real, in school, you don't really get taught how to adult. Uh, it's kind of like a, they throw you into the deep end of the pool and uh, see if you can float. And <laughs> that's kind of what life is like. But let me see, any tips from what I've uh, learned from being an adult in the past few years? Find out about taxes as soon as possible because at some point it, you're gonna have to actually do your taxes and you're not gonna understand anything and then it's gonna be too late and you're gonna freak out. So try and slowly learn about taxes as much as you can. Definitely separate your clothes in the washing. Just try and do your best. I feel like that's the best advice I can give you. Just do your best, try to find out uh, information that scares you because it only scares you because you don't know about it, if that makes any sense. Like, I was dead scared of taxes for so many years until I had to file my first tax return and I freaked out for days. And now I'm chill about it because I know what's going on, sort of, sometimes, like maybe 60% of the time. People are only afraid of what they don't understand. Don't worry, being an adult is, is, is not super, super bad. It's, it gets fine after some time. <laughs> How do you deal with being away from your family? Oof. That one's a very intense question, um, Emily. It's uh, it's honestly very hard. I feel like it's easier for people who don't have a very strong connection with their family, uh, but I am very close with my family, so being away from them is is tough. Honestly, it could be worse. Like, thankfully, my my family, they you know, they have their own lives, they have their friends, and it's not like I I've left them alone and and stuff like that. It's more we're all just kind of living our lives and and missing each other constantly. But yeah, I I do I speak with my family every day. I call my mom every day, and we FaceTime like every week, and I get to uh, FaceTime my pets as well, which is a plus. 
And now that I finished university, actually, it's uh, a lot nicer because I get to go visit a lot more often. Um, since now everything is pretty much online, I just last week went home for a week and worked from there, and it was really nice. It was like a nice change of environment, which, you know, it's really nice to refresh your brain. The way that I deal is just by, you know, staying in contact and, uh, you know, every time something happens or I make a nice meal, I send my mom a picture and I'm like, hey, look what I made. It looks delicious. And um, I call my mom every day and I tell her how I'm feeling and she tells me how she's feeling. And it just kind of keeps things feeling a little bit more normal. It's what does your dream life look like? Oof. Uh, this is a very intense question as well. I don't know, actually. Um, at this moment, uh, I don't really know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I just, honestly, besides being happy and having a somewhat good grasp on my mental health, um, I'd love to live in like a cottage at some point with, with a, a dog and a cat. Um, maybe more than one dog and one cat and uh, yeah just I'd love to live in a cottage situation I love cottages I love how cozy they are um, obviously I'd love to have a job in animation and still doing my own stuff in my free time uh, like like I am now so um, I think mainly what my dream life looks like is just me having a good understanding of mental health and how to <laughs> live life with um, without having constant breakdowns, uh, yeah. Then one day I'd probably, I don't know, move back home to Portugal, who knows? Achas que consegues um dia vir a ter um trabalho na área de animação em Portugal? Obrigada pela pergunta, Carolina Rocha Silva. Um, this question is in Portuguese and Carolina asks, do you think you'd ever uh, come to have a job in the animation industry in Portugal? And uh, my answer is I hope so. Uh, Currently, the animation industry in Portugal is quite scarce, 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 uh, compared to the UK and, you know, other countries. So uh, that's mainly why I, I, I live um, here at the moment, it's just because job opportunities are just come a lot easier and, and nicer. And uh, there's just so much job opportunity out here. Uh, but I think it's picking up now because, you know, there's, um, there's some animation festivals that are picking up back home that are, uh, you know, gaining more attraction and it's it's definitely picking up. So hopefully one day I'll uh, I'll definitely get a job back in Portugal. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always had like a small dream as well of maybe like opening up my own animation studio in Portugal and maybe creating jobs there myself. Who knows? I'll see. Also, I'm not feeling like magnificently creative today so I'm pretty much just <laughs> drawing stuff from reference from Pinterest and just sketching and and trying to loosen up my my, my cold hands <laughs> so there's nothing crazy going on today in my sketches um, V Christine art asks What's your favorite fall activities? Ooh, fall activities. That's kind of similar to spooky season, but fall activities are more, well, I'm more into fall activities than I am into spooky season activities. I love snuggling up with a book and a sweater and some tea and a candle. Oh, there's nothing better than that. Honestly, that's when, my, when I'm at peace and I love to bake uh, some cookies. Um, and like brownies and stuff that I, I mainly only bake during the fall. I've, re I've come to realize I barely bake at any other point in time during the year. Uh, so yeah, I normally bake. I, I make warm drinks. I love tea. Like I do drink tea all year round, but tea just like tastes better and feels better in the fall, obviously, because it warms you up inside and it's lovely. Oh, I love going to like the park just for a walk in the fall. Um, I just really enjoy going to the park all cozy with a podcast on and like just crunching leaves. And uh, I like to sit at the park. I normally sometimes take um, a thermos with tea as well if I wanna sit at the park and listen to a podcast. That's very nice. I struggle with anxiety a lot and I was just wondering how do you deal with anxiety slash panic attacks? Listen, there's no like 
there's no correct slash cure all for anxiety and panic panic attacks. Unfortunately, it's a uh, it's very much trial and error for everyone because everyone has different triggers and everyone has different ways of 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 calming themselves down and finding inner peace, I guess. But definitely things that you can start off with to try is breathing exercises. I really recommend Headspace. I know Headspace, you, you, there's um, the premium version that you have to pay monthly, which is a lot of money, but they have a lot of uh, free uh, sessions on there that you don't have to pay for. So I have the free version and they have a really nice SOS panic meditation session that you can do when you're having a, a panic attack or an anxiety attack. And it really, really helps you calm down. Also, the really good thing with meditation is that with trying different meditation, you know, apps or online or wherever it is, you always pick up something new. You pick up a new exercise that maybe helped you a lot in that particular moment. And next time you'll you'll use that again. So it's just a matter of, of seeing what works best every time you feel you feel awful and see what helps the most and keeping that, you know, in your heart and, and remembering that for next time and realizing that, oh, okay, this actually really helped last time. So let's try that again. I like uh, going outside is I know it's the worst one because when you feel, when you're having a panic and an anxiety attack, the last thing you want to do is go outside into the big bad world. It's taken a lot of courage to actually start doing that, but getting hit in the face with wind is <laughs> probably the best thing for my anxiety attacks for some reason. Just going for a stroll in the park. Definitely do things that you know help you relax and start, start off there. Um, hope that helped. Um, Noodles for Legs asks, what are your favorite art supplies for Inktober? Great question. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably uh, already know this, but this year I kind of did Instagram, uh, Instagram, <laughs> I did Inktober very on and off. What I used this year mainly was this mechanical pencil that I use for everything to sketch out the prompts. And then I would lighten that sketch layer with a putty eraser. And then I use my a Faber-Castell red pencil. This one's really tiny, so it's in an extension pencil at the moment. So I'd use that and then um, I'd completely erase all of the pencil lines from this one and go and line it in with this Pentel brush pen, the Pentel pocket brush pen. It's uh, It's been a lifesaver this year. And then I'd actually go in with some ink. I uh, have these like, you know, refillable water paintbrushes, um, you know, the really cheap ones you can buy. So I filled it in with um, some black ink and then watered it down. So I created like a gray ink for it. And then for extra details, I've actually been using the Archer and Olive white acrylograph pens because they're so incredibly opaque. They are technically paint pens. So that's mainly my tools that I've been using. And um, I'll show you what the uh, the paint pens look like. And then you can build it up, of course, like the more you squeeze, the more ink comes out. And um, obviously layering also creates different shades. So I find that, that this pen is really nice. And the thing is, you can do this with any ink color. I have some with different colors. I just do what you, what, just color in whatever you want, whenever you want. and. If you want like a darker shade, you just go over it and build up that that color, you know? It's very useful. Um, next question. Have you always wanted to live abroad? Uh, yes, actually. I know some people might be a little, um, you know, surprised, but when I was very little, the something that I've always wanted was to live abroad. I always knew that I wanted to go away, I guess, in some sense and, and kind of like find out who I was besides being a girl from my hometown. I was born and raised in the same place my entire life. So I just really wanted to get out there and, you know, just, just see the world a little bit. So um, ever since I was little, I, I knew I wanted to go live abroad. And the UK was always um, my first option because I already spoke the language. I went to an English school. So it was just a very natural transition for me. Also my oldest sister, uh, she'd done her, uh, bachelor degree in the UK. So I already had that point of reference of damn, the UK is pretty cool. 
Um, next question. How did you get into bullet journaling? Oh, lovely question. I don't think I've ever answered that before. I um, started bullet journaling in my first year of university because I was a hot mess <laughs> and I was very, like, I've always loved organization and being organized. But when I got to university, I was so out of my comfort zone. I felt like such a fish out of water that things just started getting a bit hectic and my brain was so foggy. I was really struggling with mental health. So I stumbled upon some bullet journaling videos by accident on YouTube. And I can't even remember who the first people were, honestly, because I, again, can't really remember anything from my first year of university. Um, but yeah, I've just found it so relaxing watching people do that. And I was like, this, this, this is it. This is what I need. Someone asked me, if you could ask your dog three questions, what would they be? Oof, I would have so many questions for my dog. She is so crazy. <laughs> um, I'd love to know what goes on in that head. Uh, I think the first question would be, do you know you're a dog? Because my dog genuinely has like identity issues. She has been living only with cats for over a year now and she's adopted all these cat mannerisms. She she licks her paws and she like, you know, does the the whole thing the cats do and she, she sleeps in the cat's beds. And we genuinely think she has like an identity issue. So I'd probably ask her if she thinks she's a cat or if she actually, realizes she's a dog <laughs> and then I'll probably ask her if she knows that she's loved and then I'd ask her I'd probably ask her where she prefers cuddles like where, where she prefers to be to be pet you know next question um, I'm almost done with my tea so we're gonna have to wrap up soon how do you deal with your hand when it hurts from drawing ah this is this is a really nice question it's very topical um I, my, I have really bad uh, wrist inflammation that flares up once when I work a lot and I recently had uh, that like a few weeks ago I basically obviously I spoke to my doctor about it because it was really impacting my work and how I was I could, I could barely like I couldn't hold a mug that's how bad my wrist was it was so inflamed and moving it in any way was incredibly painful. So you can just imagine how it was working a nine to five job in animation with a wrist that bad. I have this little wrist brace that I've had for um, a while now. So it's just this little support for your wrist and tighten it as much as you want on your wrist to like limit movement to reduce further inflammation. And then I also spoke to my doctor and she um, prescribed me some medication for inflammation um, that I had to take for like a week to fully reduce uh, the inflammation and, and heal it. So definitely speak to your doctor and uh, in the meantime, get one of these and try icing it after a day of work. I used to ice it in the evenings uh, for hours. And also I had this topical cream, this gel for um, inflammation and like for it's used for like tendonitis and stuff like that. So I'd have the gel and then I'd ice it. That kind of helped a little bit with the pain for the next day. What has been the most exciting thing that's happened during the pandemic? Ooh, that's a really nice question. I'm gonna draw a little frog actually here at the end. Just why not? Um, oh yeah, back to the question. So actually during the pandemic, I finished university. So I actually <laughs> graduated and got my degree. So that was pretty exciting. Finished my short film, which was, you know, my, my graduation film. So that was really fun. I moved to Manchester. That was incredibly exciting. Finished uni, moved to Manchester. I feel like all of that's very exciting. I feel like a lot has happened this year and um, it's been very strange and definitely not how I was expecting any of it to happen. So I feel like we're on the last few questions, actually. So your top podcast book movie recommendations. I got a lot of questions from you guys asking for book recommendations, which is so cool. All right, I'm going to I'm going to show you some of the books that I've been reading. So currently I am reading this book that my oldest sister sent me. Lost Connections. It's very, very good. Um, uh, and it's very insightful for anyone who's suffering with depression. Super insightful, kind of funny actually. And I've learned, I learned so much so far and I'm like not even halfway. It's very, very interesting. And then another book that I always recommend is this one, An Unwanted Guest. I read this book, like I devoured this book in like a week last year and it's so, so good. It's, if you like crime, thriller, you know, all like mystery and all that stuff. This book is excellent. And I recently read this by Sweeney Boo, uh, Eat and Love Yourself, and it was amazing. I read it all in one night. It's so beautiful. It's a um, 
webcomic. It's gorgeous and the story is amazing and I really saw myself in it and it was just a really good read. Uh, in terms of podcasts, I have so many podcasts that I recommend, but the top ones that I recommend are And That's Why We Drink. It's a murder, tr true crime slash paranormal podcast. It's hilarious. I recommend No Such Thing as a Fish. It's hilarious and you learn so much on it. Sawbones is incredible as well and very educational. It's a, a podcast about the history of medicine. If you're of age, I definitely recommend My Dad Wrote a Porno. That one's, it always makes me laugh. It's a classic. And we drew a cute little frog friend. Uh, just in time for the last question. Uh, how do you deal with stress and feeling overwhelmed? Quite similarly to how I deal with panic attacks, actually. I try to identify which part of my life is currently making me feel overwhelmed it's always important to identify what's like what you're thinking and rationalize it so i i try to sit down and think rationally about okay what's overwhelming me what is causing me the most stress right now and then i think i try to think what can i do to make it easier and that's kind of my process i i see what i can control what if i can control something i'll do something about it if i can't control it i just have to like um distract myself enough to to deal with it until it gets dealt with and I know it's easier said than done very it's very helpful in your day-to-day -day, and it gets easier to do and that ladies and gentlemen is pretty much it for today's so yeah thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for all your lovely questions and I hope you enjoyed I hope you um, this helped you wind down a little bit my online shop is back open now with some new restocks if you want to go check it out uh, i'd really appreciate it yeah i hope you're having a lovely day i hope you're taking care of yourselves and i'll see you guys in my next video Bye bye